Josh Hardcastle with Alley Theater Education and Community Engagement. Today I'm joined with, uh, by Bradley Dean White, who is one of our teaching artists, and Anthony Herrera, who is a student in our summer conservatory program. Now we're going to work on some of Nick Bottoms' text from A Midsummer Night's Dream. But before we do that, Bradley, why is it important to read Shakespeare's works aloud? The best way to have an understanding of Shakespeare's plays is to read them out loud. They were initially meant for the, uh, for the stage, not just for the page. In fact, what survives today are transcripts of the actors having memorized their parts, collaborating together, and creating the first published work of Shakespeare's um, complete works. So it seems to only make sense that we would read them out loud to have an understanding of them. It is an auditory experience. It is not something that you uh, uh, are supposed to read and make an understanding of. It would be too difficult. Great. So Shakespeare's plays were written to be performed out loud. Um, and Anthony, you performed uh, as Nick Bottom this summer in, a, in our version of A Midsummer Night's Dream. Can you tell us a little bit about who that character is? Yeah, um, Nick is kind of a normal, normal guy. I would say he's very overconfident. Um, he reminds me a lot of Chris Pratt's character in Park and Rec. He wants to be the best. Correction, he thinks he's the best. Um, I think that's about it I could say about him. Okay, cool. So just from the moment where you read Nick's text aloud to translating it into performance, how is that different? I found it very difficult reading it uh, uh, first without speaking it out loud because we don't use Shakespeare's words as much as we do now. And when I actually started reading it out loud, I was like, okay, I can see how this kind of works and how it fits. And the more I started saying it out loud, the more I kept on acting. It gave me clues about who Bottom really is. I'm like, okay, this is much easier than I thought. And it just kind of tied all together. And the more I did it, the more it became fun. So, Bradley, we have a speech from Midsummer Night's Dream uh, that is Nick Bottoms. I was wondering if you could coach Anthony through the speech as you might performing it for the first time. Yes, absolutely. So, um, Anthony, what I like to do when I do a uh, Shakespeare speech for the first time is I have to look at the first line and the last line if I want to make sense out of all the stuff in the middle. Usually Shakespeare knows that um, he's going to have a clear start and a clear conclusion. So I like to kind of get a uh, heads up on what that is. So let's read the first sentence chunk. I have had a most rare vision. Okay, great. So that's what this is about. I've had a most rare vision. All right, and so what's the last sentence chunk? I will get Peter Quince to write a ballad of this dream. It shall be called Bottom Stream, because it hath no bottom, and I shall sing it in the latter end of a play, before the Duke, per adventure, to make it the more gracious. I shall sing it at her death. So he's had a vision, and he wants to get someone to write a song about it so he can sing it. So that's what this monologue is about. We at least know that much. Now, the next thing I'd like to look at is punctuation. Um, there are a lot of commas here. Um, what, what do you know about the commas in the speech? Um, so from what I understand from this speech, it's kind of like he's just waking up. And the commas, for me, are kind of like his pauses. He's trying to come back to consciousness, like awake and right. be stable from this crazy dream he just had, and each comma is just kind of like a pause and just be like, whoa, what just happened? Yeah, it's some kind of a shift. Well, one of the things I do like about Shakespearean commas, and it's something to keep in mind, today, when we look at a comma in a piece of written word according to contemporary grammar standards, a comma usually does mean a pause. Now, in Shakespeare's day, a comma uh, means keep going, don't stop. And if you see a lot of commas, you know that the character is continuing to barrel through all the way to the end of a sentence. So in your case, the, um, the character is indeed trying to articulate and make sense out of this dream. But we do have other punctuation to let us know of some of the interruptions and things, like dashes, for example. Um, there are some dashes. Do you see where the first 
line is where there's a yes. dash. Tell you what, let's go ahead and read the whole speech. And when we get to the dashes, I'll see how we do with them, treating them as interruptions, um, finding a new way to say something. A dash is something that happens to you, mm -hmm. right? So go ahead and, and uh, do it from the top. I have had a most rare vision. I have had a dream. Past the wit of a man to say what dream it was. Man is but an ass if he go to about to expound this dream. Methought I was, there is no man can tell what. Good. Yes, that's the first dash in this speech. Me thought I was, there is no man can tell what. So he's getting ready to say something. The dash tells us, nope, that's not what it was. It's sort of like, have you ever had those moments in a dream where like it makes perfect sense to you when you wake up until you try to explain it and then you realize, what am I talking about? I had this dream, I saw it, it was you, Dash. But it wasn't you, it was my mother's face, but it was my best friend Ned, you know. It's, <laughs> it's kind of like that. I do wanna back up though and look at this first line. Um, this first sentence is four lines long and you have a period after the word dream. Yes. So keep in mind that you are barreling through from I have had a most rare vi well, that's the first sentence, pardon me, the one after that. I have had a dream, past the wit of man to say what dream it was, man is but an ass if you go about to expound this dream, period. And get through, try to do it all in one breath. Okay. One breath for one sentence. All the way if to you, dream? If you can, okay. yeah, and see what happens. I have had a most rare vision. I have had a dream past the wit of a man to say what dream it was. Man is but an ass if he go about to expound this dream. Me thought I was, there is no man can tell what. Me thought I was, and me thought I had, but man is but a patched fool if he will offer to say what me thought I had. That's all I have in my breath. <laughs> oh, well, but, but you just did a breath for three full sentences. So you, you didn't have to do your, your breath there. You can stop after that sentence and inhale for the next thought. So let's just try that again. Right. Try it again and stop after dream. Let it land. Take a breath and then go into me thought. I have had a most rare vision. I have had a dream. Past the wit of a man to say what dream it was. Man is but an ass if you go about to expound this dream. Me thought I was. There is no man can tell what. Me thought I was. Okay, good. So I think this first sentence is getting clearer. Mm -hmm. Now the second sentence with the dashes, I think we can do more with this. Let's treat it as if the dash is doing something to you where everything that comes out of you is the opposite of what it was in terms of tempo, volume, and um, maybe even pitch in your voice mm -hmm. so that you're going along. Me thought I was there's no man can tell what, mm -hmm. right? So that the interruption is not only an interruption of your thought, but also of everything about your character. Mm -hmm. It's just one way to, to try it, you know? Mm -hmm. Me thought I was, there is no man can tell what. Me thought I was, and me thought I had, but Man is but a patched fool if he will offer to say what me thought I had. Great, that's very clear. I get the, do you, do you get the sense mm -hmm. that, that you are trying to articulate and that there is uh, the need underneath all of it to get across what's happening in this dream, but you don't know really quite how to say it once you open your mouth. Yeah, um, would you like to, us to continue all the way through the whole speech? How about now that you have these clues for punctuation, could you give it your best to go through the end of the speech? Sure. Yeah, so, so, so pausing at periods to take a breath, correct? That's right. And then dashes, ha change the tempo and the, and the volume, correct? That's one way to That's do it. That's one way to do it. And then uh, are there any colons? There is a colon. I've got to bring up the colon. The first one, past the wit of man to say what dream it was, man is but an ass colons propel us into action. So that, the, the, what comes before a colon is kind of like the windup for a pitch in a baseball game. And then the colon happens, the pitch is launched, and what follows is some kind of direct extreme action that the previous line is serving up. 
So to see if you can do that with the colon that's after say what dream it was. I have had a dream. Past the wit of a man to say what dream it was. Man is but an ass. If you go about to expound this dream. Good, and go ahead and continue. Methought I was. There is no man can tell what. Methought I was. And methought I had. But man is but a patched fool. If you will offer to say what methought I had. The eye of man hath not heard. The ear of man hath not seen. Man's hand is not able to taste, his tongue to conceive, nor his heart to report what my dream was. <laughs> I will get Peter Quince to write a ballad of this dream. It shall be called Bottom's Dream, because it hath no bottom. And I will sing it in the latter end of a play, before the Duke, her adventure, to make it the more gracious. I shall sing it at her death. That sounds like a good conclusion. <laughs> Nice. Yes. It's a weird conclusion. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, but it's a it's a beautiful thing mm -hmm. that yeah. he's figured out. Great. So Great. so what we took a look at was the first line of the speech, the last line of the speech, giving us a place where we start driving the car and stop driving the car. Yes. And, and it's the a... punctuations or the road signs yeah. telling us how, how to maneuver. That's a very good way to put it. Great. Yeah. Well thank you so much and we oh. hope that this gives you all a clue as to how to decipher a Shakespeare speech. <laughs>